Gear Rant 2022 coming at ya. So it's been probably a solid year, maybe two years since I did the backpacking gear I hate video. We're going there again. This one might get under some people's skin. Backpacking gear that I don't like, backpacking beer. Mmm. Sweet, sweet nectar. Just ranting about gear that mostly <laughs> that I hear great things about and I disagree with. That's basically what it is. Okay, so number one, single wall tents. A lot of people use them. Six Moon Designs Lunar Solo. You have the Gossamer Gear, the One, the z Pax Duplex, the z Pax uh, Plexamid. All these tents that are single wall designed. If you know me, if you watch the channel, I use primarily double wall shelters. So a, either a two piece design or a one piece design that has an inner bug net layer. So I've used the uh, uh, Lightheart Gear Solo, which is uh, one piece, but it has the inner bug net. Right now I'm using the Six Moon Deschutes tarp with a Serenity net tent insert. Every tent that I have, even my old North Face tent, they're all double wall shelters. Single wall shelters. The idea of why I never liked them is because I've had moments um, in big rainstorms and whether it be condensation from, from me inside the tent or the uh, material just actually wetting through. When the water is just condensating and forming into bubbles, once the rain hits harder and harder, all those bubbles just start falling and just like dripping. It's like somebody just lightly misting over your quilt and sleeping bag in the middle of the night. Just not good. So in cases like that, I've always liked that inner bug net layer. It's like, it's like an extra layer. Yeah, water can come through it, but it'll normally hit that bug net and kind of roll down the side of the tent or Maybe it'll just disperse it around a little bit. It's just not as bad. The second point why I like these is because it's like an inner cage. It's like an inner uh, barrier to where if I'm rolling around, I'm not gonna touch my sleeping bag or my foot box and my quilt to the wet wall. A lot of times if it's not even raining, you'll still get condensation on the inside of your tarp. A lot of tents, especially non-freestanding tents, they don't have like a lot of foot room that you know they don't you don't have square walls they come up in an angle you're elevated up on your sleeping pad like it's very easy to brush the side of your wall of your tent and co completely soak the foot box of your sleeping bag i found that having that inner bug net layer is kind of like a barrier so if if i kind of am pushing up against it i can feel it so i i know if i'm touching it in the middle of the night so it just kind of holds me off the wall just a little bit and the third thing with a single wall tent and this is the one i never hear people talk about this is the reason why i wanted to put this on the list today when you're packing up so if your tent is soaked it, like the walls are soaked and everything uh, I know a lot of people bring little camping towels. I'll bring like tiny little microfiber or like sham wow, something that's very absorbent to uh, wipe up the inside of my tent or under my tarp and stuff. That's not always sufficient. The problem with the single wall tent, whenever you are balling it up or rolling it up, the floor of your tent that might otherwise be dry throughout the night is going to get soaked because it's now touching the uh, tarp. The, the tarp layer, the outer layer, the top layer of your tent. So if your tarp is wet, the entire tent, the entire floor, everything is is essentially gonna get saturated from that. Now you can have this problem with uh, one piece tents if they have the bug net attached, but if you use ones like I've been using for about the last year where it's like it has a bug net inner layer, I can take that bug net layer out, roll it up, put it in its own stuff sack, completely dry, ready to go for the next night. And then I can take that tarp and self-contain it in its own stuff sack or put it on the outside of my pack. That also makes it really convenient. So if I stop for lunch or if I get a nice uh, sunny patch of the day, I can stop, just get out just the rain fly portion of the tent and lay it out while I'm eating or, or filtering water or something. Let that dry out in the sun. A lot of times I pack up in the morning before the sun comes out. So having my bug layer and my rain fly layer completely separate really ensures that everything that needs to stay dry is going to stay dry because everything that's touching the ground once I unpack my pack and any additional clothing or my quilt or anything it's all going to stay dry because I've kept that dry throughout the trip. All right, let's get controversial. Let's uh let's start pissing some people off. Number 2 the pump sack. I get comments on so many videos, uh, especially anyone I've ever used my Nemo Tensor or my 
uh, NeoAir x lite sleeping pads. Why do I blow them up? Why don't I just use the pump sack? And the true answer to that is I don't have pump sacks for either of those. I got those both secondhand and I, I just didn't get pump sacks with them. So that's the real reason why I'm anti-pump sack until I got a pump sack. So I recently just bought another sleeping pad, haven't used it yet. Hopefully I'm gonna go out this weekend. It's gonna be a little chilly for this pad, but I really wanna use it, so I might just go for it anyway. This thing came with a pump sack. I wanna go weigh it. All right, so a little bit hard to weigh, but I got like 53 grams or nearly two ounces. Look how freaking huge this thing is. I could damn near use this as a pack liner in my backpack. I could in my small backpacks, anything smaller than a 30 liter, I could definitely use this as a pack liner. Then it would be worth carrying. Until then, I do not think I'm gonna ever, ever use this thing. Number one, I have good lungs. I'm a runner, like I'm proud of my lung capacity. I don't mind blowing up sleeping pads. It does not bother me at all. Ever. Number two, this is like two ounces. Now, I know people that will get the, uh, like the, let's say my quilt, the hammock gears. I, I talk about these all the time. It, it was $100 to get the premium version that is only four ounces lighter. This is two ounces. Like, why, why would you carry that if you're willing to spend $50 for, five, or for two ounces to drop the weight? How about you just don't bring a pump sack and you blow up your pad. Now I get that there are legitimate reasons of why you might wanna do this. One is condensation in your sleeping pad. Now, there's been a lot of rumors about mold uh, growing in sleeping pad. That's already been debunked years ago. That that really is a non-issue, I think. And number two is in cold weather, if you're blowing into a sleeping pad, you're blowing a condensation in there, it's gonna be wet. So if you're sleeping in like sub-freezing temperatures, uh, you're essentially putting water that could freeze inside your sleeping pad. I'm not really sure. I would really love it if anybody knows about this stuff for sure to put it in the comments below because, I mean, I'm still learning too. Like, this is just me ranting my opinions. Uh, not everything I say could be true. I mean, we all know it is. The way I always saw it is that if you have moisture inside your sleeping pad, it's not going to freeze and, like, make you colder because you're body heat is always gonna warm that air inside the sleeping pad, so it's going to keep the water thawed. So I don't necessarily think it's gonna have like the wetsuit effect where your body heats up the water and the water keeps you warm. I don't think the I don't think, I don't think the little bit of condensation in there would actually help you w keep warm, but I don't think it'll freeze, and I really don't think it'll make you colder except for the fact that that little bit of water could be taking up airspace that could be warming. So basically, if you're like compressing insulation, down or fiberglass insulation, everything, it's not gonna work as well because you don't have that air gap. If, if you're putting water inside your pad, then you have less air to warm up. That's just a theory. I really have no idea. Like I said, if you guys know, put that in the comments. I would really like to know if that's true or not because I've honestly always blown up my pads in the winter. Okay, next up, the titanium spoon. All right, now hold up. Now, let's be honest, how many of you literally just rolled your eyes and said, oh my God, Bryce, shut up about the damn spoon. Yes, I know I talk about it in like so many videos and I think it's just principle at this point. Like I, I haven't had the titanium long handled spoon for so long that I just, I just think I'm just gonna go as long as I can without having one until somebody buys me one. Somebody please buy me one. But I just wanted to bring it up today because I got a new piece of gear. Oh, look at it. Been using the KFC spork for years. Really no need for a spork. All I need is a spoon and it's kind of short. I mean, oh my gosh, it's too short. But I was recommended by a lot of people in a lot of videos on different ones and I've just never, uh, got them. One of them was a McFlurry spoon, which I'm gonna get that and just drill the shit out of that thing. But I got a blizzard the other day and got the Dairy Queen spoon, and just for you guys, oh yeah. Drilled one singular hole in it just to piss some people off. <laughs> This one astonishes me. This astonishes me that it's it's like a huge thing and it's a replacement for other gear. So, whew, this is the big one. The backpacking bidet, AKA the pocket bidet. I have no idea who makes this. I have no idea the brand. I've never looked it up. I know what it looks like. I've seen them. I'm sure if you type in pocket bidet or backpacking bidet, I'm sure you can find these. Anyway, I don't, 
disagree with them being an aid. What I disagree with is people using them as a replacement for toilet paper. I mean, if you have a bidet, you don't need toilet paper until you need toilet paper. Now, like I said, I think it's a great aid. I think if you had a little backpacking bidet, give yourself a little squirt, get cleaned up with whatever wipes or toilet paper you're using, I think it's a great thing. As a replacement for toilet paper, I think it's absolutely crazy. I would never be caught doing that. Because the truth is on the trail, a lot of times we don't eat our normal diet. So our digestion and everything might not be the exact same it is in our day-to-day -day life. Like for instance, I don't eat mountain house breakfast scramble anytime other than when I'm backpacking. So more often than not, the food I'm eating on a backpacking trip is not what I'm used to and it's just not gonna be enough to do the job. I actually heard that Mountain House is giving away free backpacking bidets with every breakfast scramble purchase and it's got a guarantee right on the bag not to do a damn thing. Now if bidets work for you, more power to you. Not for me. Another little gripe I have are these things. Do you need this little, do you need this little cap on here? That's, a, that's an inside joke. If, if you know, you know. Canister stoves, these, I, I've been using alcohol for so many years and I've recently got into the, these the last probably two years or so. They boil water faster. They're a little bit more convenient, uh, just setting up and getting stuff going faster. The thing I hate about these, there's no way to really bring the correct amount of fuel. So with alcohol, I know exactly how much water it, or how much fuel it takes to boil water that I'm taking on the trail. So I've got to dial down pretty good. With these, it's like you pretty much have to take an entire can. And the problem is also, whenever it gets down low, it's like, is it is it empty? Do I, how, how many boils do I have? Do I take it and not take a backup and risk not cooking my food? If it's really low, then do I bring another one so I just have way too much fuel? Or if you're like me, you don't want to bring way too much fuel, so the one that's only got a little bit in it, I'll probably just throw in the back of a tote and bring a brand new one, and then that one like never gets used again. So I, I really just haven't cracked the code yet on how to use these properly, so that's mostly on me, I think. Now I saw uh, Amy Rout, if you guys ever watched her channel, she got married. I think her name's Darlene now. I don't know if she posts uh, much anymore on YouTube, but I saw in a video she writes with permanent marker uh, all the boils she gets out of hers. So she's got them dialed down pretty good. I just haven't put the time in using these to know how many boils I get out of each, nor do I think I have the capacity to actually remember to write down all the slash marks uh, on these when I boil them, because I'm not gonna bring like a permanent marker backpack in. Do you guys have any gear that just chaps your ass when you see people using that you just don't agree with or you don't see the positives of using? Put it down below so we can all argue with each other and So if you got any value from this, I don't see that happening, but if you were entertained at all, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that stupid freaking little bell beside it. Leave a comment, leave a like, and I'll see you guys on the next one.